Hello and welcome to another episode of how to build a compiler with LLVM and MLIR. This is Samir and in this episode uh, we're going to talk about an overview of the entire um, LLVM, MLIR and Serene. It's going to be like really high level, uh, just enough for us to get started. So let's uh, jump to it. First of all, let's briefly talk about uh, a generic compiler and some resources that might be useful here. Um, I listed two books. Uh, one is uh, Modern Compiler Implementation in ML, uh, which I believe is uh, available for free. Uh, but I, I posted a link. Uh, hopefully it would be free. Mm, this one is like uh, quite compact when it comes to compilers. It's like 500 pages. It has three different uh, implementation, one in ML, which I already uh, posted here, and two other, one in C and another one in Java. To be honest, I started uh, all of them. I read few chapters and the ML implementation is much, much nicer. Uh, just go with it. If you don't know ML, it's quite easy to uh, learn ML to read the book. Uh, the the other two Java and C, you have like you get into too many technicalities of the language, like the host language itself. So it's harder to uh, cope, you know. Um, so just uh, read the ML one. It's a quite nice book, and I highly recommend to read it. The second one, which known as the Dragon Book of Compilers, uh, I, I love the name, by the way, uh, is kind of a Bible book, you know, a reference book for compilers. It's, it's more than a thousand pages and it, it, it's well known, it's really good and highly recommend to read this one as well. But to, to begin with, uh, I think like the first one, is going to be much easier to read and it gives you enough to get it started. Um, one of my assumptions for the rest of these uh, videos is that you know about compilers to a, a beginner, at least you have like a beginner knowledge of compilers. Uh, so the stuff that I'm going to talk about, I'm pretty sure you already know, but just Let's go over them briefly because uh, we're going to use use them for LLVM and MLIR. Generally speaking, most of the compilers out there uh, have some steps, some phases uh, to read the source uh, the source code of the language and generate the target code. We kind of like. We split these uh, steps into three categories. Uh, I most like most of the time we split them in two categories, but like in some uh, some books and some literatures, there's like three. The first uh, and the first um, category is front end of a compiler, which is a piece of software that reads the code and do some does some analysis on on the code and create a data structure out of the source code. It has like three or more steps. Like these three are the most common steps, but it depends on the compiler and depends on the design. It might be more than three or less than three. The first step is lexical analyzer. analyzer or Lexer, the piece of code that does this, we call it Lexer. Uh, what it does it to, uh, is to tokenize the source code into tokens. And that's it. So you give it a source, uh, source code in form of a stream of characters. It creates a tokenized data structure for you. It It's kind of like marking uh, different pieces of source code as a well-known semantic in your uh, for your parser. For example, it would like 
replaced white space with the symbol white space or things like that, right? The syntax analyzer or parser is the piece of code which reads the result of the, uh, that Lexer provides to it like, uh, and created abstract syntax tree or an AST from it. What it does is basically to check the source code, the syntax of the source code, and create an AST from that uh, source code. Easy peasy, right? And finally, there's another step called semantic analyzer, which uh, tries, like in this step, we get an AST, the semantic analyzer gets an AST and try to semantically analyze the, so the AST and rewrite it into another AST. For example, um, in a language, we might have function calls, like let's talk about Lisp in Lisp, when we have a list, by default, it's a function call. It tries to f find the function name, which is the first element, and call it by pass it the other, the rest of the elements of that list to it. So from the syntax analyzer standpoint, this is just a list, right? In the AST, in the uh, abstracts, in the AST, basically, that list is marked as a list with the, with the elements that we created while we were writing the code. But semantic analyzer look at it differently. It looks at the semantic of the language and asks the question, is it a function call or is it just another li uh, list or like a data structure, list list? Um, if it was a, function call, it creates a new AST, replace that, replaces that list node with a function call node. And like it does some magic to the AST, embed some data in that node and some other stuff that yeah, it's not, uh, it's out of a scope of this video for right now. So basically we, it tries to rewrite the AST into another AST that has right semantics and it it's ready to uh, generate uh, like an intermediate code from that AST. That brings us to the second category, which is like middle end. Oh, I have a typo here. <laughs> anyway, let me fix it actually. Middle end, yes. So. The middle end is like, uh, usually uh, nobody talks about the middle end. There's no term like middle end in LLVM or other stuff. At least I didn't came across it. I didn't come across it. But uh, basically what's, uh, what's happening in the middle end is we, pass, we have an ISD which, which we know is semantically correct and we're going to create some intermediate language or intermediate code or intermediate data structure out of that AST. And then we do some kind of optimizer uh, stuff on the um, intermediate code to make it ready to pass it to the backend to generate the target code. Uh, different compilers uh, have different intermediate medium code or data structure or whatever you want to call it. Uh, later on, we'll see that in, in the case of LLVM, it generates an IR intermediate representation as a code, which is in some sense uh, similar to an assembly code. Um, it has like two formats, like textual format and binary format. And then it has the infrastructure for which uh, like, which you can write something like a pass, which is called a pass. And uh, you can have many passes. These passes are responsible for optimizing your IR in a certain way. I'm going to talk, them, talk about them when we get to the LLVM part. But the, but the important thing here is that when we uh, create, a, create this intermediate medium out of the AST, then we have several uh, sub-steps to optimize that 
uh, intermediate medium even uh, like more and more remove some unnecessary code blah 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 finally pass it to the back end which the job of the back end is to generate the target code what is the target code depends on the compiler uh, each compiler has a, like a target right uh, it, it can be a machine code it can be javascript like there's so many uh, compilers for different languages to comp uh, to javascript right the target code for those compilers are javascript itself so if they have an intermediate uh, representation the back end of that compiler would take that intermediate uh, medium and create javascript out of it the target code is javascript for different platform different compiler the target code might be different so for example webassembly might be a target of a compiler so the end result could be webassembly code so um it was like super brief and really really short uh overview of a compiler like I, I can't even say overview here. It just it was like, yeah, here is a compiler, how it works in two minutes. Uh, make sure to uh, read the first book at least to have some understanding of the compilers. Uh, somewhere around the chapter 12 of the first book might be good enough to get us started and to have a, like a good grasp of um, what a compiler is and how it works because it's going to help you a lot with the LLVM uh, stuff. Uh, let's jump to the next uh, thing, which is the LLVM itself. Um, LLVM, obviously the website is LLVM.org. I put a link to a video, which is really good. You can, I highly recommend to watch this one as well, but in, I'm going to go briefly over uh, what LLVM is and why we're going to use it uh, but again highly recommend you to watch this video it's amazing the stuff that I'm going to talk about is deducted from a really good chapter from uh, open source architecture of open source software or something like this uh, which is like open uh, open source book it has a chapter on LLVM who uh, which is written by Chris Latner, if I, I hope I didn't butcher the name, but he's the one of the main author of LLVM, so you can trust him. Um, let's let's talk about LLVM. By the way, the stuff that I'm going to tell you is only related to our project. It's related to Serene and why I decided to use LLVM. There's so many other aspects of LLVM that uh, are really cool and like amazing, but at this time, they're not uh, kind of, we don't gain any benefits from them or talking about them. So I left them behind. As you can see in like this diagram, uh, LLVM is like splits into three different pieces. The front end, which we talked about uh, before, the optimizers and the back end. Just like any other compiler, the front end is a piece of code that reads the code and creates an intermediate medium, right? In this case, the intermediate medium is something called LLVM IR, which is LLVM inter intermediate representation. It's a language for its own, like it's a language basically. Uh, it's similar to kind of, you can think of it as an assembly code. Uh, it's it's very, um, like it's totally different, but you can think, uh, think of it that way, you know? The front end job is to read the source code, do whatever, who do it wants to do, and just emit that LLVM IR code. And, that LLVM IR is kind of like LLVM IR is kind of the international language of LLVM planet, right? So you can pass it to any piece of uh, any section in 
LLVM and expect it to like show you some results. For example, the optimizers or the pass infrastructure gets an LLVM, it analyzes the LLVM IR, does some stuff to it, and emits a new LLVM IR. Uh, to, like basically it gives you gives back an uh, LLVM IR, right? So the passing uh, the optimizers are bunch of passes. Like the term pass, like each pass is a piece of code that takes an LLVM IR, try to optimize it in a certain way, and return LLVM IR again. You can think of optimizers optimizers as a pipeline that the input is LLVM IR, and in that pipeline, some stuff happens to that IR, and the result is a optimized version of the input IR. Um, it's not only for actually optimization, you can do some other like semantic checks and stuff like that, but we get to that later. And finally, in the back end, we have different pieces, different target targets, depends on the project. You can pass a little VMIR to ARM, tar like to target ARM platform x86, PowerPC, or WebAssembly, or whatever. And when you pass the IR to each of these backends, they just generate the machine code, or in case of WebAssembly, the WebAssembly code, or basically the target uh, code for you. So as you can see, it's quite like LLVM. The, it's quite simple when you look at it like uh, from far away, but the way it, like the design of LLVM, which is a set of libraries to create a compiler helps us to basically take advantage of some different smaller pieces, smaller libraries that are well engineered and like they are battle tested. So we can use them to create our compiler. I don't have to be worried about like, basically what we're going to do is to create a front end for LLVM. Like uh, Clang compiler is a front end, Rust Lang is a front end for uh, LLVM, Haskell and Serene is going to be another uh, front end for LLVM. So what we're going to do is basically read the source code and create the LLVM IR at the end. And we can rely on the stuff that LLVM provides, like the target uh, code generation, like we're going to get so many platform supports. Uh, we're going to support so many platforms just because LLVM supports them. Uh, the debugging functionality is already there. Like, I don't have to care about that. I just have to instruct my uh, LLVM IR in a certain way to be able to let LLVM uh, debug it basically. And I'm going to get so many stuff out of the right out of out of the box with LLVM, uh, which is a great pl a plus for us. Let's go to write. So yay. Um, Another uh, good thing about LLVM, which is really amazing, is the number of passes and optimizers that are already there. So when I, like in case of Serene, when we generate the LLVM IR, the final piece of the Serene compiler would be the LLVM IR. When we generate that, we can use all of those optimizers on the LLVM, on the IR level and basically it's amazing. I don't have to write tons of optimizers to optimize my code to be to run faster and more efficient because so many like, good engineers already wrote many many optimizers and passes. I can just use them and write only few passes that might be specific to uh, my language, right? So it's a huge plus. LLVM has like many, many, many cool features as well. I highly recommend you to uh, take a look at the website and to learn more about LLVM and why it is such a cool uh, tool. But 
for now, these few uh, bullet points is like are why we want to use LLVM or why we use LLVM. Now let's get to the second piece, which is MLIR. MLIR is a sub project of uh, LLVM. Obviously, as you can see the, uh, from the website, uh, it distributes with LLVM itself. So uh, uh, we talked about it earlier in episode one or two, can't remember really. Uh, we just have to build it alongside LLVM, that's it. Um, another simple diagram, MLIR is basically works at the optimizer level or whatever uh, category we call it. Like I called it optimizer, but it, we, we can kind of think of it as the middle end kind of thing. We have the front end stuff, which is going to be Serene or Clang or Rust, Haskell, whatever, right? They read the source code and emit some sort of IR, not LLVM IR. Some IR, I literally named it some IR, right? This some IR might be way different than LLVM IR. Here's the part that MLIR enters the scene. MLIR provides a different ways, it provides a certain way to create IRs, right? To create inter intermediate representations different than LLVM IR. So if you read the web page, uh, read the home page, you'll see that basically from the experience of other languages like Rust, Swift, and Julia or other languages uh, that works on uh, LLVM that uses L use LLVM, sorry. Uh, in almost all the cases, they had to create another representation, another intermediate representation layer on top of LLVM IR to be able to like, analyze the language semantically or do, to be able to make a smarter uh, decisions about how to optimize their code or how to do certain stuff uh, on IR level. So with that in mind, the, L the LLVM community created MLIR which exactly has that goal to let the engineers who wants to create a compiler to create other repre uh, intermediate representation on top of LLVM IR. It has a, a concept of dialect, so you can ha create a new dialect, which is going to be a new inter uh, present new intermediate representation and each dialect can have uh, can has its own types its own operations and like everything can be uh, tailored for that IR specifically and at the end when you created your dialect you have to create a layer to trans transform that IR into LLVM IR and like MLIR provides anything that you might need from uh, uh, from a framework to create transform jobs, transform an uh, analysis jobs, to rewrite rules. Right? It's it's really good, and it has. It, uh, I don't know the history here, but if you look at the web page and the documentation, there's a long list of dialects that are already available to us for different purposes, from async uh, facilities to, uh, I don't know, like loop optimization and different stuff, like GPU related paths, uh, sorry, dialects and so many other stuff. So we can actually use all of those dialects and mix them up with our own dialect to create some IR and be smart about the semantic of our language do like it's a higher level you can think of it as a higher level language in compared to a lower uh, level language like compare something like python with c 
Python would be the MLIR generated IR and C would be LLVM IR. You know, so you ha you can be a smarter in a, in a higher level uh, IR. Do some like directly map your AST to a um, to the IR and then use the uh, pass infrastructure to basically rewrite your IR to different IRs and so many like cool stuff we can do. Uh, one thing that I didn't uh, note down here that works for LLVM and obviously for MLIR as well. LLVM has a cool tool called TableGen. You can write backends for TableGen. Like it's a, sorry, TableGen itself is like a language, you know? You write what you want. You It's, it's a declarative language. You say what you want and you pass it to a table gen backend, it generates C++ code for you. And you can obviously tune that code and like, you, you still have to do some stuff like implement some of the functions, but basically the way it generates the code is amazing. It, it saves us a lot of time. And MLIR has a backend for the table gen itself as well. So when you want to create a new dialog, you just, you can just uh, like use that declarative language to describe what you expect from your IR and let MLIR generate the code for you, which is like really amazing. And one of the reasons that I decided to move back to C++ as the host language because just this feature, it generates everything and like saves us a lot of time. It's brilliant. Now, um, let's move to the next section, which is Serin itself. I'm not going to uh, talk a lot about Serin. I'm just going to uh, show you the flow of how Serin compiler works at the moment. We're going to pick up, like any of these steps uh, and have us, I'm going to pick them up and have an episode on each of them or more than one episode and go in depth talking about the code and everything. First of all, obviously, uh, Serene is a compiler front end to LLVM and MLIR. So what we do is actually, like the main goal is to read the code, read the, uh, read the Serene code and generate LLVM IR from it. But that being said, like in the string itself, we still generate the object files. We still uh, use the C compiler to link them together and generate the machine, actual machine code. We're writing in a compiler and we it should be able to do that. But we still uh, use LLVM uh, to do that. So here's a flow of what we do and how Serene actually compiles the code. The, the main entry point is setting C or setting compiler, which is a binary. All it does is to parse the input argument, command line arguments, and set up a reader context and stuff like that. I'm going to talk about the details uh, in future episodes. But for now, it creates a reader reads the input file and the reader section, uh, the reader part is going to generate an AST. Then we, uh, we use that AST with another piece, which is called semantic analyzer. And that semantic analyzer walks the AST and node by node tries to rewrite the node according to semantics of our language. For example, the same thing that I mentioned earlier, it looks at a list and decides whether it should be a function call or it should be a list or, or even like, is it a definition? Is, is the first uh, element of that list a def? If it, if it is a def, let's rewrite it as a def node. Uh, don't, don't worry if you don't, get, uh, don't, understand, don't understand what I'm talking about at the moment. Uh, I'm going to go uh, in details about each of them in future videos. It's just a high level. Don't don't worry about that. 
just know that the semantic analyzer job is to get an ASD and generate another ASD, which is semantically correct. Then we create an uh, we cre create an intermediate representation from the ASD and we call it SLIR, Serene Language Intermediate Representation. SLIR itself is a dialect of MLIR. So there's a table gen file somewhere. I'm going to sh show it to you later with the description of how SLIR look like, looks like, what operations it has and what types it has. Uh, we, I'm trying to map the ASD dire directly to SLIR. So each type of node in, a, in the ASD has some sort of operation assigned to it. You know, it's, it's, it's going to be more or less one on uh, one to one mapping. Um, one to many mapping. I, I mean, like the one node from the ASD to many operations from SLIR. Then uh, MLIR supports something called lowering. So the lower uh, verb here is a term in MLIR, it is a concept in MLIR that is like changing a dialect to another dialect or changing a dialect to LLVMIR. So we lower the SLIR to to some of the built-in dialects of uh, MLIR. And I guess I could have chose a better name. We call the resulted IR MLIR again. <laughs> I know it's funny, but it's, it's kind of makes sense. You know, uh, SLIR is something external to MLIR, but when we lower it down to built-in dialects of MLIR, I just call it MLIR, right? And finally, we do some sort of uh, anal uh, like analysis, uh, analysis on the MLIR dialect and lower it down to the LLVM IR dialect. This one is a, like a built-in dialect again, but this is the lowest dialect you can think of in MLIR. Everything has to be converted to LLVMIR uh, because LLVMIR dialect knows how to be uh, converted to LLVMIR itself. So I call this uh, IR LIR, like lower IR, makes sense, it makes sense. And finally, we lower the LIR to LLVMIR itself and generate the object file from it. By generating the object files, the comp like we can stop here, right? The compiler is done. It generates some object files, and you need a linker to link those objects file to generate the the um, machine code or the native binary or whatever. But unfortunately, uh, using the linkers uh, directly is really tricky. I had no idea about it a while back. I thought like using the linkers because I always use Linux. It seems like ob it, it seemed obvious to me, but when I uh, studied linker for a, for a while, I was quite surprised. Um, like it's really, really complicated. That's why everyone uses the C compiler <laughs> to basically link everything together. As far as I know, Rust, is doing the same thing they call the c compiler to uh, link the objects file but don't take my words for it i just read it somewhere so as the final step we try to figure out the default compiler of the uh, platform which is in our case clang or gcc and then we use that compiler to link all the resulted object files and create a machine code from it at the moment of recording this video, and if you take a look at the EP3 branch on the uh, repository, we have up until here. So we have all the steps, all of them works fine. We can generate the object files, but we don't have the final step. The code is, is there, but I have a memory leak there. I have to debug it. And like, basically it's a, just an at attempt to do it. Uh, but don't worry about it. 
we're going to get there eventually also one more thing to uh, to talk about right now i didn't talk about the type system here at all i didn't talk about different aspect of a programming language at all because they're really important but they're not important to the wiring of the compiler we can leave them for later and implement them later on but for now we want something that works with the most minimal set of features as possible serena at the moment only understands integers and nothing more so uh, we're going to implement everything little by little but but don't ex expect a full-fledged language at this stage um, i guess that's it for today but in the future episode in the next episode i'm going to talk about the reader itself we're going to have a look at the entry point of the compiler which is certain c we're going to go through the reader show you the code tell you how it works uh, and basically uh, rip out the different pieces of reader to make it as clear as possible if you like wh what i'm doing please subscribe to this channel let me know what you think or uh, if you have any feedback i i would be happy uh, for you to share them with me and thank you for uh, being with me today I hope to see you on the next episode.